In our previous video, we learned what the six trigonometric functions were, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. And in this video, we're gonna learn what trigonometric identities are. These are gonna be some of the properties that those six trigonometric functions have. By the end of the course, we're gonna have tons of trigonometric identities, and we're gonna learn how to get through each one of them as we go through the class. But these are gonna be the beginning ones here, these eight of them. But before we get into them, let's talk about what trig identities are in the first place. So a trigonometric identity is, this is an equation. And since it's trig identity, it's an equation involving trigonometric functions. That is true for every angle where it is defined. So think about in algebra class. If you have the equation x squared equals 4, that is definitely not an identity because that's only true for the value x is 2 or the value x is negative 2. It's not true for the value, say, x is 3. So it's restricted to only being values uh, equal sometimes. Those are conditional equations. On the other hand, if you had the equation x squared is x times x, that would be identity. Those always are equal to each other no matter what the value of x is. So that's the concept we're talking about in trigonometry now as trig identities are equations that are true no matter what angle you have, as long as at least you're talking about defined values. Now the first three are the ones I actually already talked about when introducing the trig trig functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is always the reciprocal of cosine. And finally, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So nothing new on those three, it's just the same thing I had mentioned in the previous video, but now I'm calling them trig identities. Another way, if you think about, you know, sine theta, that was y over r, and cosine theta, it was x over r, and if you were to divide those two expressions, y over r over x over r, think about how you divide fractions, you take the top fraction and you multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction, and then we see we get exactly y over x, and remember y over x is the formula that tells you what tangent of the angle is. So the next identity is called a ratio identity. Tangent of any angle is the same answer as if you take the sine of the angle and divide it by the cosine of the angle. Similarly, since cotangent is reciprocal of that of tangent, cotangent of an angle is the cosine of that angle divided by the sine of that angle. This can be very useful when you want to switch back and forth. Some problems, you want to have everything in terms of sine and cosine. Some problems, it's better to put them in terms of tangent or cotangent. And so these ratio identities allow you to switch back and forth here. Now the final identities here on this page are the Pythagorean identities and these are going to be used over and over and over and over again throughout this whole class and in future classes and every time I teach trigonometry I say if there's going to be a single trig identity that you remember after this class it should be that the sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle always gives you one that's very important. And I tell my students that before you get a bachelor's degree in a STEM field, you are gonna use that identity over a thousand times. I promise you, you're gonna use it over a thousand times. It's just used over and over and over again. And if you don't remember at least that one coming out of this class, you are gonna have a really hard time in anything that's beyond trigonometry. Now let me explain why this one is true. So if I draw a quick little picture here, we had our x-axis, our y-axis, we had the initial side and terminal side, 
and we knew that the point x comma y was a distance of r and we were trying to find the trigonometric functions of the angle theta well if you think about it the x is how far you move in the x direction the y value is how far you move in the y direction so we have this picture here and this is in fact a right triangle so the pythagorean theorem would say x squared plus y squared equals r squared that's a true statement pythagorean theorem and if we divide everything by r squared I would have x squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared is 1, which is the same thing as saying x over y quantity squared, sorry, not x over y, x over r quantity squared plus y over r quantity squared is 1. And the x over r was the same thing as cosine theta, which we're squaring plus the y over r was the same thing as sine theta, which we're squaring. And if you switch the order, you get sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and that is our first trig identity. And again, you're gonna use one over and over and over again. You really wanna know it. I do wanna give a warning here. When we write a trig function with a squared like this, what we mean is not like the sin is being squared. What it really means is you find the answer of whatever sine of the angle is, whatever fraction that is, and you take that fraction and you square that. A lot of people misunderstand what we mean by sine squared here, and it's honestly, it's poor notation. It's kind of stuck around for you know quite a long time in mathematics. It'd be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to change it, so we're kind of stuck with it. But just be careful when you're using these squares here um, when we're doing this. Okay, now if you were to divide by something else, you would end up getting one of these other identities here. For example, if you divided the x squared plus y squared equals r squared by x squared, you'd end up having a tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. And if you divide by y squared, you get 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So since all three of them come from the Pythagorean uh, theorem. That's why we call them Pythagorean identities. And as of right now, we're just beginning to see these things. You don't have to memorize them today, but you probably want to have a little sheet out with the important identities next to them, and you can refer to them as you're doing problems. But by the end of the class, you should know all these just off the top of your head. It should not be something you have to think too hard about. These are the beginning identities, and there are going to be quite a bit more of them in this course.